I want to know, has anyone here ever heard of Yvette Simpson? Anybody? Okay, so this is going to be a new segment called Elite Whispers. And Yvette <laughs> Simpson is an elite whisperer. What is an elite whisperer? I got it from, I made up this term. Think of the term dog whisperer, right? And that's it was a show about a guy that know how to train dogs and communicate with dogs, basically. And to me, an elite whisperer is somebody who's in mainstream media. We don't know how they got there. It's like a, a progressive, is a unicorn, a progressive who is on mainstream media on a regular basis, and they're able to spit truth on, on, on some level without getting kicked out. Because, you know, certain people, they spit truth one time. Like, I don't see Nina Turner on CNN anymore. You know, they kicked them out. But let me uh, show the first video, and then we're going to Yeah, I know her. She spits hot fire. Hot fire, baby. Oh, somebody. Structure. If that's something that you come from the progressive wing of the Democratic Party, is every side going to have to give a little? Um, I think certain sides have given a lot, you know, and I think the question is how much more do we need to give? You know, I always say this. Unity is great, but freedom is better. And there's a part of this population that has sacrificed their freedom time and time again for unity. And they're tired of it. Yes, we want to have compromise. Yes, we want bipartisanship. But it shouldn't cost people wages and health care and education. And so if you're asking us to come together, and that means that my world doesn't change, the people whose world needs to change doesn't change, I don't want that kind of unity. I want the kind of unity that leads to change for people who have waited for it. And if this pandemic hasn't showed us that we need to serve people, first and that needs to be a unifying message the republicans need to be on board with actually taking care of people if we can unify around that i'm all for it but if that means that we're going to compromise and we're going to continue to serve the one percent the people who we have always served that's not the kind of unity we need right now Yvette, go ahead Ron. yeah they they definitely yeah. they definitely going to start taking her off because <laughs> you know she you know i mean she speak way too much truth and they're going to get to her and they're going to be like, hey, this, you know, she sounds, she's going to be like Nina. People are going to start thinking and hearing this and it's not going to be good for us. So, but it's true. Like, you know, I just don't understand how is it that every time there's a Democratic president, we always have to talk about bipartisan. We always have to talk about coming together. You always have to talk about like when you look at all these like Trumpers, you, they always like, oh, yeah, we need to come together. We This is America and all of, you know. But in 2016, they were like, if you don't like it, leave the country. Get out of this. So everything is completely the opposite. So every time it's like, why is it that the left and the people are always the one that have to like give something up? Like, why can't it be the Republican and coming in and saying, you know what? We, we're willing to do this because this is going to be better for every American out there. But it's always the Democrats that's like working across the aisle. Yeah, man, because I know those Republicans don't exist anymore. The Republican yeah. Party is, in fact, just a cult of personality after Donald Trump. At this point in time, there does not exist a single genuine Republican, even even going down to uh, this guy, Mitt Romney. Do you think he really genuinely cares? No, he doesn't. No, the None Republicans do. are moderate Democrats. Those are the new Republicans, mm -hmm. just like. Obama said himself, if it was, you know, in the 1980s, he would have been a moderate Reagan Republican himself, you know, that he admitted it. So, no, that's the, something that I always talk about is the overturn window. Just crazy people in the Tea Party that say just, and, and threaten the most outlandish things. So then the term moderate, it becomes something between normal and crazy. And everything goes to the right. But every time everybody says something about defund the police, defund the police, not going to eliminate all police or whatever. But if you think so. You know, I really don't care because then you're going to think we're crazy, too. And then when, we, when it's time to to have real negotiations, then we could have something that really resembles bipartisanship and not just doing whatever somebody on the right wants because it's not as you know, it's not as crazy as the craziest mm -hmm. member of their party. So I got another clip for you guys. Let me show that one. But just to let you know, that last one got 1.1 million the last time I checked. So that one caught fire. Here's one more from me. From case study QB. Polls then, of course, depend on those two special elections in Georgia on, on January 5th. This election also the culmination on the Democratic side of four years of activism. Absolutely. And I think we need to continue that. You know, I think this is a great time for the Democratic Party to hit the reset button. Like, let's go back to our roots. Organizing is our foundation. Remember the big wave of 08 that came from a strong organizing foundation built by Barack Obama. Let's continue to build on that. Let's talk to our voters consistently. Let's, as a, a 
uh, president-elect said last night, let's make real the promises that we have made to the base of the party who has been with us, who showed up through a pandemic. Let's make sure that we recognize that before we go out and start, you know, trying to build this huge coalition. Let's show the folks who showed up that we love them and let's continue to stay consistent. I do want to push back a little bit on the flip situation. We won a lot of seats last cycle and, and, and Republicans got some of those back. But I do believe in places where we were true to our mission, we won. For, for instance, the progressives who were in swing seats all won. But the moderates who were in swing seats didn't. And I think part of that is we didn't make our message clear enough. Go with what you know. Go with talking about serving real people. You can do that in moderate districts, and it doesn't have to feel extreme. It just says, I'm here for you and I represent you. That is the foundation of the People's House, the representative form of government. And let's continue to reinforce those. Matthew, Matthew Dow. Preach. God damn. I want her to lecture me. I want her to just <laughs> sit at the front of a classroom and just tell me why I'm an idiot for not being a yeah. full-on yeah. democratic yeah. socialist. This is what we we always say, man, if you got a choice between a Republican and a Republican light, you're going to go for the real thing. You don't want Diet Coke. Yeah, exactly. I was showed my <laughs> wife this video or one of the clips and the first clip she was like, wow, who, who's this? And then I said, just wait, honey. I showed her another video and she was like, OK, you send me that clip. Send that clip to me right now because she wanted to share that joint. And I have one more for you. You know, I, I want to push back a little bit on this idea that uh, moderates didn't win. Um, you know, I think that it's pretty easy um, uh, when you look at uh, the districts, when you're a progressive running in New York City, it's really easy to win elections as a Democrat. It's not so easy in states like mine. And I think that the most important thing that we can do is identify successes, early successes that all Democrats could agree on, whether that is curbing the cost of prescription drugs, which the president tried to uh, take as his own. It is, it's, it's, it's going to be really tricky. But I think for Joe Biden, yes, he needs to have the right rhetoric. But he needs to have victories for working people in this country to establish that base and solidify that base for the next uh, two years and hopefully four years. Progressives in swing states won. Progressives who ran on uh, uh, actual issues in swing states won. And so we're not talking about folks in New York. We're talking about people who just flipped these red seats, like Katie Porter, like M Mike Levin, seats that we've never had yeah. before. They won overwhelmingly. And what I'm saying yeah. is that we just, what I'm saying is no matter where we are, and I think we agree on this, Heidi, no matter where we are, let's talk to the issues. Let's not run away from them. And I think there was this expectation because Trump was such a vitriol character that we could win by just saying Trump is bad. And mm. what I'm saying is serve the people in your district and find out what they need. Mm. I we think can deliver that. The real fear I have, George, is 2022 is right around the corner. DFA got our first application for a candidate running for U.S. Senate yesterday for 2022. 2024 is around the corner. We're going to need our best. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I'm not sure anybody's ready. Yeah. Yeah. Love, this right. Right. Love this woman. Love this woman. I want to I want to say something completely tied to that. That breaks my heart for charles booker that solidifies uh, in my mind that charles booker would have put up such a much better fight than amy mcgrath that goes back to leadership you know that's what i'm saying that's why like chuck and nancy need to take the blame it's under their watch that they lost seats and they were mm. not they put bad candidates because you look 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 at me look at me a progressive win main second district joe biden carried the state but their candidate get like destroyed by Susan Collins, like Susan Collins. Like we're talking about like the second most hated Senator in like the Senate. Mm -hmm. And then you go in and then you choose Amy and then she gets destroyed by Beach McConnell. No, I will. I'm not, I'm not even going to put the whole blame on Nancy and Chuck because they did not endorse Chuck Booker or Charles Booker at all. The progressives of the party ignored Charles Booker until maybe the week before the election. Charles Booker was a nobody and everyone was pushing Amy McGrath. That's not just on the establishment leadership. That's on everyone for not seeing well, who, the potential who, who is of the Charles leadership? Booker. Who is the leadership? You are, you are asking for the grassroots, as always, do their own work and help other people when the leadership is failing. Whenever the, the grassroots is trying to do their work, the leadership puts roadblocks in them. They'd rather lose with somebody like Amy McGrath than win with a real progressive because they don't want the real progressive policies that we have. And as a matter of fact, you know, we talked about this before, how, about the whole blacklist. They didn't want anybody to go against their handpicked candidates. And if you, if you did, then 
every uh, organization, posters, media companies that work with you are going to get blacklisted from ever working again from the D Triple C. So that's the kind of thing that they do, and that's leadership's fault. Absolutely. And if you look, mm -hmm. if you look at it, who, who did the Amy hire? She hired Bloomers, Bloomers for folks after. If you look at Chuck Schumer, pick Amy from day one. He got behind her. They they gave her all the money that she needed and everything. So at the end of the day, when you look at, you weren't able to flip none of the Senate seats. You got some runoff in Georgia, and you got them there because the youth and the black vote turn out. And then the first thing that you do is go and say progressive almost causes the race. The only reason why you have a runoff in Georgia and have a chance at the Senate is because of the youth and the progressive and the black vote. So you have to look at yourself and say, what message do we deliver? And as leadership, if the Democrats, they should just now reward them and they need to be replaced because they fail. And it's their leadership fault. Yeah. They need to be able to take some accountability. See, John, and you brought up a good point. I want to ask this question because I know Charles Booker, he was really for Medicare for All. Like he was really pushing that hard. And I think that's why he would have gotten a lot of the Republicans that voted for Trump, he would have brought them over to his side. The question is now in Georgia, we have two Senates that's up. How should they run? I, I did see an article. Nancy said that they should not run on liberal policies, but we have different mindset. Oh, they haven't. They haven't. Mm -hmm. uh, the ads that I've seen, I'm here in Georgia, the ads that I've seen, they're not running on Medicare for at all. Exactly. They talk about platitudes, about accessibility to health care. But mm -hmm. John also, also specifically, um, you know, he says that, this guy is trying to Purdue is trying to tar me with a socialism uh, uh, label. I'm not for that. I'm not for Medicare for all. Blah blah blah. So he's, oh, wow. He, you know, he, this is the kind of thing that we run it. I mean, I still voted for the guy, but come on, man, this is the kind of thing that that feels like you know I gotta wipe my face after they spit in my face, man. What? Well, come yeah, on. Yeah, yeah. And, nah, and, that, and that's what I always say. It goes back to messaging, right? Like I think the Democrats, what they should do is they should go in and hire some of those Republicans from Trump that are because as bad as their messages is thick. And the mm -hmm. Democrats just want to fight every rather than saying, OK, what is the message that we're going to to say without spitting in the left face? And they already come, yeah. come in. And what's going to happen is we know a lot of those people, their voting turnout may not come out because they may be get angry. They may be like, dude, like I just went out there. I registered myself. I took the chance on COVID and I voted for these people. And the first thing that they do is spit in my face. Like, mm -hmm. why am I going to go do it again? Like, screw them. Okay, I lied to you guys. I said that that was the last video. I have one. This is the last clip, and then we're going to move on to the next topic. But this one is a goodie. I saved the last one for uh, for last. Can, can the president-elect reach out to your, your state, North Dakota, reach out to that broad swath in the middle of the country that has gone deep red? I'm going to give you a proof point for what Matt's just saying. 65% of the people in North Dakota think climate change is a problem. We're a big fossil state, we're a conservative state, but yet they see climate change as a problem. They get concerned when they see radical ideas being introduced to completely upend the energy system because that creates angst in their mind, both economically and in terms of cost of energy. There is a place that you can go in solving these problems that speaks to all sides and does not uh, uh, radicalize important issues in this country. We saw that with the pandemic, which was incredible how mass got radicalized and politicized. We need to stop doing that and we need to come together and both sides have to address um, the concerns that the other side has on solutions for this country. You know, the unity that we have is really unity about what the problems are. It's bringing together solutions that can bring everybody together so that we can walk together and I think solve we have to start up. Problem. I think we have to start up by bringing you and Yvette together. Yeah, well, <laughs> she just said radical three times. You just called the base of the Democratic Party progressives radical. That is not, I mean, that's a Republican talking point. Progressives mm -hmm. want everyone to breathe clean air, even people in North and South Dakota. We want everyone to have health care, even people in rural areas and even people in working class white America. We want everyone to have a chance at the American dream. We're not saying, we're not saying leave people out. We're saying bring people in. But if parts of our party, when we bring home the bacon, as we did just yesterday, call us radical like Republicans did, that's not the starting place of a good family conversation. What, one, one, yeah, one you need here. <laughs> you need clean lungs so you can smoke that weed you voted for man come on <laughs> Gabe. That's, I, I think go, going to to kind of what what i think it was john was saying before is we need messaging but not just messaging is we need to run on things that are popular is 
really common sense. And I, maybe that's what we should call ourselves, the common sense Democrats. Because if you can see in all the polls, all the exit polls that Medicare for All is anywhere in the low range, 60% popular, upwards of like 75% popular across across both parties, across the electorate. Why not run on that? If you see the $15 minimum wage is, pop, is popular, run on that. If you see um, ending the wars is popular, getting money out of politics has almost 90%. It's not rocket science. Take the policies that have overwhelming support and run on that and you'd never lose it, yeah. it, it's but the fact is mm-hmm. we said it before that they'd rather lose than than give up this power because it's very easy to run i'm not them it's very yeah. hard to run on policies and to make promises and to think it through i'm gonna sound a little bit like a broken record but this is it's not necessarily a, an accident you know, what happens is, is that if you win too much with a progressive message, you might actually have to do something. Ah, you know what yes, I'm saying? And they don't yes. want to. Yes. You know, so if, true. but if they always have some kind of divided government and a minority, they could always run and trying to do something good and never have to do it and just fundraise and win their seats and not ever have to do what we want. Yeah. You know, so that's why they rather lose than win with progressive message. They rather have Amy go against Mitch because they could always say, "Well, Mitch McConnell has a hundred thousand bills in his desk and he doesn't want to pass anything." Mm-hmm. So they want to be able to use that. And and we talked about this in previous show, twenty twenty four. They're gonna be like, "Oh, this one is worse than Trump." So we can't allow them to happen. It's going to be the most important election of your life. And it's going to be the same message. Like Democrats don't run on policy. Yeah, like they, yeah. their, their message was Trump is bad. We already know that. But like, what are you like? I think what the video says, like, you need to know your district. I believe that when you look at it, 70 million people voted for this guy. Mm-hmm. We know that America, there's the problem in America. And we know that he's based the 38% to 40% is it's like real and they're not going anywhere. But I hardly, I don't think it, I don't think it's 70 million people. Yeah. I think, you know, the Democrats have to do some self-searching and realize that what message are they going to get to bring people, even Republicans, because there's some Republicans that you talk to and they're like, yeah, we agree with you guys, but the Democrats don't talk to us. In any serious strategic endeavor that you're doing, whether it's in, in the military, they do after action reports. If you're in project management, like I'm in, we do retrospectives at the end of every period. If you're in sports, that after the game, you're going to go and watch tape. And it just seems that Democrats aren't capable of just looking at the most basic things and taking a step back from themselves and saying, OK, we really are serious about winning. Let's look at everywhere we could improve. And even if you do do well, in this case, they won the presidency. I think it was by a hair. But build on that win and see, okay, we, we messed up here, we messed up here, let's try this next time. But Democrats, they just they just know one, uh, they just know one strategy, just repeat it over and over, just try to radical centrism, mm-hmm. radical centrism, radical centrism, run to the right, try to attack attract Republicans, and it fails every time, mm-hmm. and they just keep doing it over and over. And the definition of insanity is doing things over and over and expecting different results it's, it's the donors it's about yeah. to sign man <laughs> yeah so let's wrap up this segment basically again i want to give a shout out to yvette simpson my new favorite person i saw a lot of people she got a lot of love from the, those videos and a lot of people saying they're going to start following her and i, I hope she gets her own show that would be a miracle I'm sure. yeah, i think it's uh why simpson power on twitter i'm not gonna forget that name that's one thing yvette simpson and yeah. so if we're moving to the the next segment i just want to say everybody to those watching right now a like subscribe the like doesn't cost you anything we're not asking for money that like will help this message and this content get out to everybody because it'll help in the algorithm so if you can smash the like button subscribe and, and we'll keep bringing you this show every single monday at 8 30 and let us know what you think about those videos in the comments below